All right, guys, here is the video. Totally rad commercials from the 90s, and we are going to react today. So let's check it out. We moved back from the sun. That's the earth and the moon. That's about the same. Let's see how far Saturn is. Oh, wow. Wow. That is old a school. Miles. Doing your homework? Yeah, almost done. Programs like Redshift really take off. With the old penny of commercials back when they actually cared. Now let's see. They can rock the system. The Intel Pentium process. Motorola has made it easier to stay directly in touch with those Yo, Motorola. Oh, look at that. It's a pager. Pagers were cool. I had a pager. It was very awesome. Another Nokia discovery. Small words are hard to read. Which is why at Nokia, we make our screens big. So they're easier. Big phone, small phone. Big phone, small phone. We bounce back and forth so many times. Nokia. Of course, back then you didn't have the ability to. I mean, T9 was the thing, right? So back then, all you had was the ability to hit A, 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 to hit C, you know, so we didn't have the ability like we do now. So, you know, they went from tiny little tiny phones to big phones and then back to small phones, and now we're at big phones again. Ooh. This is personal. This is magic. As powerful as a computer. The old e ink as simple as a piece back when the paper. PDAs Newton's were popular. Newton learns about you, understands you. Newton is news. Newton can receive a page. It Newton was cool then. We didn't have tablets back in those days, so you know, some some device like this where you can keep track of journals or even logs or anything was super cool back in those days. It's like Windows 95. With Windows 95, it's easy yep. to get on it. Windows 95 is a good addition. Windows just had this thing where they go back and forth between good and bad and crap additions, and ME was crap. So 95 was, was real good. That was before Windows 2000, obviously. Oh, yeah. They all had a disk man. They skipped like crazy. And these things were total crap when they first came out. Back when Sony was big and real, real big in the media and they were competing with Apple before iTunes was a big popular thing. Um, you know, the Discman was awesome. It would skip a lot when you, you know, you'd first jump around or you had to move around a lot. It would skip because obviously it's reading off of an optical disc. But, um,. You know, they came a long way. They started to make them to where they had anti-skip, where they put a device inside of there to where if the disc sh shook, it didn't, you know, create so many problems. So, Sony definitely did a good job with those, but we all know that optical media was crap. And, you know, soon was replaced by the iPod and then, you know, the iPhone, so on and so forth. Jetsons. Radio Shack was a bomb. They used to spend hours inside of Radio Shacks. They used to have all kinds of electronic devices, little things that you can pick up and try out, and little tiny circuit boards and capacitors and resistors and ultra capacitors and diodes and all kinds of stuff. And then phones started to become pretty popular, and then that was, that was the route they went, obviously, with the Sprint commercial here. And the know-how of Radio Shack. They even showed Astro how to use his mobile phone. Astro has a mobile phone? Hmm. Mobile phones, man. The new Sprint store at Radio Shack. They were new. It's like, you had a mobile phone, you were rich. Hey, hey, be careful. It's, like it's the coolest thing in the world just to have a computer back then. Repairmen who actually show up. We have school records. Yeah, baseball scores. Pizza places that deliver. It may be chaos. But it's organized. Home management software with Bob. Yeah, Bob was a huge flop. Nobody really liked Bob. Can you believe what's possible these days? Conversation. American Online. Famously, you've got mail. For anybody that grew up in this time frame, would know that. Younger kids would have no clue, but 
you used to actually have to listen to the modem dial up to the internet through a hard phone line. The internet is not magic and it wasn't instantaneous back then. So what you would have to do if you had a 28.8 PPS or 56K modem, you would have to wait for the phone line to dial in. You would hear all of the sounds through the internet traffic, the beep, you know, and then you would connect. And the first thing that AOL ever said was, you've got mail. And AOL was like the way to connect to the internet back then. Worlds of information, one click away. All the things you find only on the world's most popular internet option. Now available on Future. Online. They held the market forever. There's still some people that have AOL well, accounts. Of course, it's just a mail account now. Magic of Disney to your home computer using CD-ROM technology. Discover the world of Disney's animated storybooks and step inside. Open up the library. Yeah, so back in these days, we didn't have Google, and we couldn't just Google a video or check out a, a anything online, an article or anything. So they had these little digital media discs, and they would have discs that had. Um, you know, encyclopedia, for example, or these little storybooks and things like that back in the day. You'd have to put them in through an optical drive or a CD tray, and then that's how you would interact with them. Which was super cool back then. And follow Timo, your guide. Now, what do you want to do? Through a jungle adventure, just it's like hard to believe the Jungle Book is that old. Make it all happen. With wise old Rafiki to help with it so many times over the years. The son of a king is called a prince. You'll find animated surprises every step of the way. Sneak up on Zazu for Animation, of course, is a huge deal because most things were still in 2D and most things didn't have the capabilities to do that. Back home to save the Pride Land. Or open up Meet Pooh and all his friends. Storybooks, everything was on either a three and a half floppy year. A disc, of course, later on down the line in the 90s. Oh my god. Back in the day, you had the, you had the disc changer. You were, you were awesome. Circuit City, of course, is one of the biggest electronics stores back in those days. You had Circuit City, service merchandise. Uh, Best Buy, of course, had everything. You know, I think a lot of the reason that these stores particularly went out of business is because everything became digital. So you no longer have to go buy CDs. You don't have to go buy music in a store. You have to buy it, but you don't have to go to a physical location to buy it. And in some ways, that kind of sucks because there was that nostalgia of actually having to get up with your family go to the store pick out a movie things like that it was super cool same thing with blockbuster we get higher customer satisfaction ratings than any other specialty home electronics and appliance chain you're gonna miss circuit city or electric machismo give me the tie up honey beanie baby pass the fix what the hell? every hair That's kind of creepy. Just a little bit. Oh, look at that! An Amazon commercial way back then. That's obviously before Amazon blew up. This is now, obviously, the Amazon's the mass market for everything. I think that Amazon just did a good job of making it simple. But outside of that. Amazon had the fastest shipping and so everyone would just you know hey I can get a package here in a day or two if you live in an inner city you can get it in a couple hours now so Amazon's really came a long way of course Jeff Bezos is a billionaire that's flying into space now because of that having embarked on a new career at the age of 45 Kareem found himself traveling in coach Kareem Abdul-Jabbar great basketball player huge huge man obviously Look at that last time. Jeez. His ba they're obviously showcasing the fact that he's a huge man and he can still move his hands around the keyboard the really easily. Book is designed to fit the way his power books work. were massive. They were heavy. They had terrible displays. Uh, I think if anyone that used recent technology were to use something like that, they would be 
completely sideways. They would not be able to use it for more than a couple minutes. Battery life was also terrible. Look at those laptops. Holy moly. Of course, back then, they, you know, they didn't have the technology they do now with transistors and capacitors and super tiny chips, so everything had to be bigger. The ThinkPad is still a great, great laptop. Obviously, it was massive then. My parents have showed me how to get streaming video over the internet. My dad showed me this cool real-time radio station online. They, t they taught him how to Smart. get streaming video My over parents, the internet. They still okay. have a That's almost, you know, super simple for every kid now. I have a four-year-old that can get on the internet. So you can finally unlock the true power. U.S. Robotics was the main designer for a lot of the modems back in the day. Oh, there we go. 56K was fast back then, believe it or not. Now everyone's mad if they don't get, you know, two or three hundred megabit downloads per second. Profusely corded, physically conspicuous. I think people still have cords like that. Yeah, iMac was Which super, super hot back PC. then. It was more about the looks. I mean, if you look at the back of it, if you go to the, the back side, like they just showed there for a minute, and of course the cords were a big thing because the iMac was able to cut that down to just those two cords coming out there, and then of course your mouse and keyboard. But the back of it, where it was just that blue, was just super good looking. Of course. Every monitor back then was massive, so the size didn't matter. What we look, what we were looking at, is the aesthetics as far as, you know, how they were able to make it transparent and blue and more shaped appropriately. And of course, it had a handle on the back so you could pick it up and move it around like that. And the thing still weighed a ton. I mean, most people probably weren't doing that, but of course, it had that option. A lot of computers didn't. Bye, Mac. Before. Before, after, before, after. I'm not even sure what the hell that is. Before to after. Simple. Introducing the Apple Quick Take Digital Camera. Oh, digital camera. Yeah, that thing was. Man, that thing was ugly. And bulky and just terrible. No wonder that didn't make it. Mm. Of course, you know, back then you were still taking pictures with a lot of 35 millimeter film that actually had to be taken out of the camera, sent off somewhere for development, and then you would get the pictures back in, you know, a week or two. But uh, nowadays you take a picture on your phone, it's instantaneous, you can see it, you look at it, if you don't like it, you delete it. So there's something being taken away there, I think, because when you had the photos have to be developed and then you would get them back. And sometimes there would be surprise photos and they're like, oh, look at this stupid angle or this guy looks funny. And you don't have that anymore because if people don't look perfect, they're, they're gone. They just get rid of them. With the new digital Mavica from Sony, you can take your photos on a normal floppy look, disk. You had to take your photos on a floppy disk. We have SD cards that are this big now. We have TF cards that are even smaller than those that can go into cameras. And you had to carry around a three and a half inch floppy. Uh, obviously, it had a, a magnetic disc inside, and that's how it was read. This is crazy to think. On your computer. <laughs> that's how you trade files. I think there was just like a, just over a megabyte of data on these, so you can have a megabyte of data that would hold virtually nothing nowadays. Nothing. And you don't need additional connections or special software. What are you laughing at? It's funny how they're showing this is like a passing a note. I mean, take a stupid picture on your camera with a huge floppy disk and pass that floppy disk to put it in another computer and you know, it's just funny. Yahoo. This is back when, you know, web browsers were still competing against each other. Yeah, of course, nowadays is pretty much going away because of all the controversy, but... Yeah, who was in that market for a while? 
Yeah, there, was a, there was a search engine called Spider that was big and popular back in the day as well. And I think Google just used the right algorithms in order to overtake everything. And that's why they're the number one. Ask Jeeves. This site you had to physically go to, obviously, and then you would type in a question, you know, like what they said, what's good for fly catching, and Jeeves would give you the answers. It's crazy. Everything's done on Google now. You don't need Jeeves or anything else like that. Well, like I said, it goes back to the different algorithms that these sites are using in order to get this information. Now we have Wolfram Alpha. This is DVD was cool when it came out. Why was DVD cool? Because it was on a disc, which we all know discs made everything better because you can skip faster, you can rewind, you can go all the way back to the beginning. So before this, we had VHS. And VHS was a tape drive, and you would have to rewind it in order to get back to the beginning and it took as much time as it took for the little electromagnetic motors inside of the VHS to turn that tape is how long it took to get back and it was just bad media it had a lot of issues and problems you'd have to track if you had fuzzies on the screen and things so when DVD came out it got rid of a lot of that plus it increased the quality so everyone thought that that was super cool back in the day when you rented a video they used to actually put on the VHS be kind please rewind because if people would return their videos without rewinding them that meant that you had to go home and take anywhere between who knows five ten minutes to rewind a VHS just so that you can watch it which is crazy a movie on a disc the size of a CD. The picture is twice as sharp as VHS. Yeah, yeah the there's the comparison to VHS. It looks and sounds like this media is crap too. I mean, optical media was crap. The disc scratch, the warp, the break super, super easily. You couldn't leave them on the sun. But it was better than VHS. Like director's notes, behind the scenes footage, trailers, and more. I think that was the other big part. You can fit and condense a lot more onto a DVD than you could a VHS, obviously. So we well, used to have different speeds. They were like LP, SP, uh, that you can record at. And you can actually record things off television that way, too. But you'd have these different speeds and things. And DVDs just changed a lot of things. Watch a movie right on your computer. And rent or buy DVDs from these great Hollywood studios. DVD. Back when you used to rent DVDs, there was something about that, like going to the movie store, going to a blockbuster, picking up a DVD with your family, maybe grab some popcorn, maybe grab some snacks, go home, watch the movie. It was just, there was something cool. And the fact that it, it wasn't always there, right? So you go to the rental place, sometimes they wouldn't even have the DVD that you wanted on the shelf. You would have to wait. And so if like a new release came out, sometimes you'd have to wait two or three days just to watch that movie and it it might sound like a pain or like it was like holy crap why would you want to live through that but it was super cool because it gave you something to do together and you physically had to go somewhere it's just it's just a different feeling i mean there's convenience in the fact that we can download media now but the fact that you had to do it together it just it just had a different feel to it you just had to live through it i guess with over 3,000 titles to choose from, make sure you see your next movie on... 3,000 titles, now there's millions of titles. That's it. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. I kind of brought back some nostalgic feelings about things and went back down the memory lane or whatnot. But yeah, it was fun. That was cool. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Of course, check out jmedia1.com for all the latest tech blogs and reviews. I do reviews almost every single day on the latest and greatest technology or just cool stuff or cool events happening in the, in the tech community. All right, thanks, guys. And if you like this video, like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.